Sometimes iron and steel seem to have a mind of their own, and they want to do things while you're forging them that aren't really what you thought you had in mind. Now, frequently, these are characteristics that if you stop and think about it, you can predict exactly what's going to happen. And even though it may not be what you want, you can either work to prevent it, deal with it later with a little filing or a little grinding, or in the case of making an eyeball punch, or sometimes a rivet set, you might just want to go with it and let it do what it wants to do. Let me show you what we're talking about. When you draw a bar out, you start with a parallel bar and you start to taper these ends, you're actually affecting the surface more than you are the middle. This tends to upset and that's what causes the mushrooming on your chisels but that means you end up with what some people refer to as fish lips as you draw this out. The further you draw it out, the worse those fish lips get. Ultimately that forms a cold shut and you need to get rid of that. So if you can't control it, and on a real sharp point oftentimes you start back here and it kind of bulges out a little bit so you can control it, but on something like just a little short end taper, this is real common. But an eyeball punch you want that. You want a little round depression in here for punching eyeballs and various figure things. And that's round and, and it comes, comes back this way, if that makes sense. And this is the shape you want your eye to be. So we can use this to our advantage. Otherwise, you have to punch or drill this end. And that can be a real nuisance to get centered. Now for this particular tool, I'm going to start with a piece of tool steel that I've already turned into an octagon, just because I wanted it. You can use round, you can use square, doesn't matter. It's hard to find octagon steel, but I kind of like the way it feels in my hand, and it doesn't roll off the anvil. So I made this into an octagon first. This is actually S7. It's a little trickier to heat treat, although it's easy if you can control the temperature right, but it needs a very high critical temperature. So it may not be the best tool steel for a beginner. You can do this out of 4140, 5160, like you might find an old coil spring, might be a better choice. So we're going to put this in the fire. We're going to get it hot. So we've got a good heat. And I'm going to start working this right at the edge. If I start working it back here, then it might bulge out a little bit on the end. That's the opposite of what we want. But if I work right at the edge, it's going to want to slide across the top and upset and form a little depression in there. I'm also using kind of sweeping blows. I don't know if that really helps. But now you really want to work this square, then octagon, and then round. And you have to think of, so that's already starting to form a depression. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. Think about the size and the shape of the eye you want. What kind of a little thing needs an eyeball? It's about the size I want it. Are you making an eye for a humanish kind of a figure? Are you making the eye for an animal? So that's got a little depression. It's not a lot of one, but it's enough to help in our next step. This is actually pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and round that up. Now on a nice round kind of bulgy eye, I think looks best. Do that. I'm going to take that depression we've created, and I've got this little kind of ball punch. That's something else you can make yourself. I'm going to drive it in there. Looks like my vise could be tighter. Try and keep it fairly symmetrical. 
that will fix it if it's not. I also turn the little ball tool, since it may not be symmetrical. I'm going to work it around so it takes care of any issue it might create. That's pretty much all we need to do at this stage. But I don't want a round eye. I want an oval eye. So I'm going to very gently at the anvil just work that down and make it just a little bit of an oval. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully you can. Now because this is hot, I'm going to finish refining this with a hot file. I'm going to pretty square across the end and then file the profile on the outside to what you want. Because this S7 is air hardening steel, that's getting too hard to file. Well, that's just a quick look at how you might be able to use something that is annoying in one situation to your advantage in another situation. Now I need to get back to welding railroad spikes onto a a piece of half inch square bar. What does a railroad spike on a stick and an eye punch have in common? You're just going to have to come back and watch another video and find out. So we'll see you for that one in a day or two. In the meantime, I hope you like this one. Hope you can give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Go out to the shop, make something, but stay safe and wear your safety glasses. See you next time.